All right, welcome to Kealakakua Bay on the Big Island of Hawaii. Um, I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey, and we're here with my field geology class visiting the Big Island, and we're doing a canoe, outrigger canoe snorkeling tour in the bay here. So we're getting the students uh, all loaded up. It's a little bit rainy and drizzly, but we're heading out to uh, the bay where the, near the Captain Cook Monument to do some snorkeling. So I'll uh, chime in with a little geology, a uh, little bit of the area, and maybe a little bit of underwater photography as well, uh, showing some of the, the cool reef features here at Kealakakua Bay on the big island of Hawaii. Got a couple students here in a kayak, and then we got the rest of the crew loading up in the outrigger canoe. So stay tuned and we'll catch you maybe partway across the bay. Okay, we paddled about maybe two thirds of the way across the bay, um, looking to the east here and then swinging around and looking to the north. You can see the white obelisk out here. That's the Captain Cook monument. So um, the history here the best I remember it is in the late 1700s, um, the first interaction with the native Hawaiian people and uh, Europeans was with Captain James Cook, who sailed into this bay. Um, and his arrival here actually coincided with a festival that the Hawaiians were having. And so when they saw a ship arriving, they thought it was actually uh, one of their gods, uh, Lono. And so they somewhat revered Captain Cook and his men and his strange ship, um, took him in and welcomed him. Uh, apparently they stayed for a few days or weeks um, and then eventually left. And then they needed repairs to their boat so they came back. And during that time, some of the finds were kind of doubting uh, that this guy was a deity after all. And so there were some tensions. Um, I think Captain Cook tried to grab one of the chiefs and take him on the boat. Things got ugly and the short of it is that <clears throat> Captain Cook and I think a couple of his men as well were actually killed uh, in the conflict. And so that monument over there is actually owned by uh, Great Britain, England. Um, sorry, trying to paddle and, and keep the camera steady at the same time. Um, so anyway, yeah, so th this place has some, some history to it. Um, not just for the ancient Hawaiians, but for European explorers. Uh, the cliffs in front of us here are all layered basaltic lava flows from Mauna Loa. I don't remember the age off the top of my head, so I apologize for that, but we can see some of the layered look of these basalt lava flows. You can also see some of the little holes and crevices in there, uh, maybe collapsed or little sections of lava tubes. Uh, as these stacked lava flows are kind of stacked one on top of the other. Um, and the story with those is that, as best I remember it, and if I'm getting this wrong, I apologize, but that the, uh, when the kings would die, the chiefs uh, in ancient Hawaiian culture, um, they would, there was someone that would be lowered down on a rope and put the king's bones and remains in one of those little alcoves or nooks up there. And that was a, considered such a great honor to, um, put the king's remains in there. Uh, so it was somewhat a highly sought after um, position. And then what they would do with the person that was lowered down on the rope, once they'd safely tucked the king's or the chief's remains in the cliff face, uh, as they would cut the rope and the person would plummet to their death. But again, it was considered quite the honor. Um, so interesting, um, but beautiful place. Um, the sun's not quite out yet, so you probably can't see how blue the water is hopefully it'll peek back out i'm going to catch up with our our tour group down here and then i'm sure we'll end up somewhere in this this side of the bay uh, doing some snorkeling so just wanted to give you a quick little view of kealakakua bay in on the big island of hawaii Thank you. 
So unfortunately, the audio for some reason on this recording just didn't work, and I'm not sure, but I'll try to narrate this section as best I can. Here I'm just explaining that these big cliffs uh, at the head of the bay are formed by large collapses of this coastline out into the water. So these are actually head scarps for big landslides um, that have formed over time. And so this would be a big section of the island, a flank of the island of Mount Aloha that's actually failed and slid out into the ocean. And that's where you get some of these very steep escarpments uh, in different places along the island. And so, um, yeah, so that's where you see the really steep uh, front of these here. Um, yeah, just trying to fill in the information that I had here. I think that was most of it, um, but I apologize the audio on this last little video section cut out. I uh, hope you enjoyed the little snorkeling adventure there, looking at some of the fish and the reef communities of organisms that live uh, out here in the bay and along the, the shoreline. Uh, there's part of the group paddling away. So this was probably me finishing up my little geology spiel, talking about these rocks and then getting ready to to catch up with the group and end our little adventure here. So again, apologize for the audio, uh, but hopefully that was somewhat helpful. And then I believe here at the end, uh, I'm just making my final pitch of um, appreciating everyone for watching and uh, you're always welcome to donate various ways through the YouTube channel, the banner at the top of the YouTube page, the thanks button, and then there's also PayPal links under the video description. Thanks.